Hello, my name's Stephen Wilkinson. I'm a producer, marketing engineer and lecturer here at the Academy of Contemporary Music in Guildford. I'm here in Teaching Control Studio with Shaw Microphones to talk about the do's and don'ts of vocal recording. I'm going to focus on preparation before you get to the studio, experimentation with mic choice and mic type in the studio, and I'll also focus on monitor mixing and headphone level as well. To start, vocalists. Before you hit that studio, you've got to prepare for it. So the first thing you're going to think is, do I go out on a bender before I go to the studio? Most of the time it's a no. Second big tip is to think about bringing a lyric sheet with you. Not necessarily for you, because having a lyric sheet in front of you can be a big hindrance. It's actually more for the producer. So whilst you're performing, they can track where you are in the song and give you feedback on any words you might need to do again or sing slightly differently. And the third thing is to know the song. Even if you are doing a, a cover or, or a song you think you know, or perhaps it's, it's a fairly new song, you should know the lyrics inside and out. It really can slow down a vocal session if you, you haven't got those lyrics prepared. When you're in the studio, it's about experimentation. Your starting point is what mic to choose, and it's very much up to experimentation between you and the producer. You can start by taking the verse or the chorus and doing a couple of takes with a few different types of microphone. A 50 pound microphone might sound great with a vocal or a 5,000 pound microphone might sound great with a vocal. It's up to you guys to record small parts, listen back and then decide which one works for the track. And trust me, you'll know which one sounds best with your voice. Your other consideration is the mic choice itself. Not only the price is a factor, but it's also the design and model and type. The two main types that you're going to find in most studios are a condenser and a dynamic mic. Uh, ironically, the dynamic mic is a fairly flat mic, but was very good at handling high pressure uh, sound levels. So for instance, if you're doing any screamo vocals, even spoken word, dynamic mics can be very good for this. But if you're looking for that more Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, top end brightness, we can hear your breaths and saliva, then you want to go with a condenser microphone, nice and bright, lots of fidelity, but not as good as handling high sound pressures. So you must be aware of this when you're making your decision. So guys, when you're in the studio, it's really important to have the correct headphone mix, and it's up to you to communicate with the producer exactly what level you require in your headphones. So if you're a singer who likes to perform with reverb or delay, let the producer know. If you're too loud or too quiet in your headphones, this could cause you to sing flat or sharp, which is no good to anyone. It's also important that you use closed back headphones whilst tracking, especially if you're gonna need a loud volume in your track, or for instance, you're gonna do the one ear off, one ear on technique. This can cause spill into the microphone, which again, isn't very useful. And lastly, guys, how you're feeling comes across on the record. So if you want to sing a sad song, you have to be in a sad place emotionally. If you want it to come across as fun and happy, you've gotta feel that way and sing that way. So remember how you feel, is gonna come across on the record.